Here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report, I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. The United Nations is warning of a looming famine in Somalia, where a searing drought fueled by the climate crisis has withered crops, killed livestock, left nearly 8 million people, half Somalia's population, in need of humanitarian assistance. The UN's humanitarian chief, Martin Griffith, spoke in the capital Mogadishu after touring camps for internally displaced people and visiting hospitals treating malnourished children. Griffith said afterwards hundreds of thousands of people are at imminent risk of death. I've been shocked to my core these past few days by the level of pain and suffering we see so many Somalis enduring. Famine is at the door, and today we are receiving a final warning. The unprecedented failure of four consecutive rainy seasons, decades of conflict, mass displacement, severe economic issues are pushing many people to that, the brink of famine. According to the United Nations, 730 Somali children died this year at food and nutrition centers between January and July alone. The centers were set up to help children with severe acute malnutrition. Audrey Crawford of the Danish Refugee Council is warning the crisis may soon get even worse. Famine is on our doorsteps, and we're going to be witnessing the death of children on an unimaginable scale in the last months of 2022 if we don't act fast. 30,000 people have been arriving and moving between IDP camps each week over the past weeks, which is an increase of 135 percent on recent months. Over a million people have displaced internally this year so far. Most of them have walked for up to 10 days in search of food and water, arriving with literally nothing in a deteriorated state, with malnourished children or children who have died. Many of the mothers I have talked to had buried children in the previous days, either from contracting diarrhea or measles in the overly congested camps or along the way from malnutrition. To talk more about the looming famine in Somalia and what's happening right now, we're joined by two guests. From Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, Milion Bilai, General Coordinator of the Alliance for Food Sovereignty in Africa, also a member of the International Panel of Experts on Sustainable Food Systems. And in Mogadishu, Somalia, Adam Abdelmullah is with us, Deputy Special Representative of the United Nations Secretary General and UN Humanitarian Coordinator for Somalia. Dr. Abdel Mula, we'll begin with you on the ground in Mogadishu. Can you describe more what is happening? We keep using words like looming, but in fact, the crisis is there now, when you have this number of children, not to mention adults, who are already dying. Well, uh, Ferris, thank you for having me. Uh, as you rightly said, the current unprecedented drought uh, that is a result of four uh, consecutive failed rainy seasons, with the sixth, uh, the fifth and the sixth projected to also be below average, is causing acute food insecurity. As we speak, 7.1 million Somalis are acutely food insecure. Among them, 1.5 million children below the age of five are acutely malnourished. Within this category, there are 365,000 who are severely um, malnourished and may not make it by the end of October this year. Um, the figures you cited of the deaths are actually uh, those of the children who managed to make it to the feeding centers and the hospitals. In the countryside, in hard reach and inaccessible areas, the numbers are much, much greater, and the rates of death among children are much higher. 80% of the internally displaced are women and children. So we are looking at a perfect storm. 
as the emergency relief coordinator said during his uh, press statement here, the famine review committee uh, assessed that famine would hit Somalia sometime between mid-October and uh, December, unless we miraculously manage to uh, upscale our humanitarian response. And that is, by all accounts, a very big if, given the current level of resources that we have at hand. And Dr. Abdel Mullah, you've uh, spent time visiting uh, these hospitals. Could you describe what you saw there, uh, as well as these feeding centers? What kind of resources exist to take care uh, of children who are already suffering from severe malnutrition? You know, uh, decades of conflict and the absence of a central uh, government have uh, rendered the health facilities in Somalia uh, very, very fragile. And many of these uh, hospitals and, and uh, health centers are um, suffering from shortages of medicines, supplies, uh, nutrition um, supplies in particular, and also um, adequately trained um, personnel. The, the scenes that we see uh, in these hospitals, especially uh, in the feeding centers uh, um, um, in these hospitals, are truly uh, gut-wrenching. I tweeted about this, and I posted uh, some pictures. And if you look at my uh, Twitter account, you will find some of those pictures. And I still say, these are the lucky ones who made it uh, to, the, to the health centers. Imagine those in, in the, the hinterland, uh, in hard to reach areas, or areas that are under the control of uh, armed groups. Um, the situation is much, much worse in, 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 in those areas. Um, with regard to the supplies and the nutrition uh, supplies in particular, um, we have been suffering from uh, shortages of funding that resulted in um, supply chain disruptions. Up until uh, June this year, the humanitarian response plan with its drought component for 2022 uh, were only 18% funded. Then th thanks to the United States and uh, the infusion of resources that it provided, uh, in August, our uh, funding levels jumped to over 60%, uh, 67% to be precise, uh, for uh, the humanitarian response plan for 2022. But the plan itself has been outpaced by the growing needs because it was conceived sometime at the end of last year. And since then, the numbers of those in need have been steadily growing. Milian uh, Balai, you are in uh, Addis Ababa. Could you describe what the situation is there in Ethiopia and also elaborate on what the causes uh, of this crisis are uh, across East Africa? I think there is always a uh, food shortage in our parts of the world. Um, and also, I think in, in Kenya, also, I think close to three point five people are suffering. And in total, uh, my brother can correct me, um, it's about 20 million. I think the, the drought is uh, very, very serious. I think the big question for me is, why is this happening? Um, what has kind of sucked um, our resilience, you know, um, as Africans, as uh, both at the country level and at the continental level, so that every time this happens, we extend our begging bowls to uh, to the others, you know? I think that's a, that's a very important question. Somalia, for example, as uh, uh, my, my brother said, before the war, uh, they were producing plenty, and now they are, they are producing half of what they were producing before, you know? Uh, so I think the first culprit would be the climate, uh, the climate change, um, I think the recent IPCC prediction is uh, uh, probably in the future over 50% of maize producing area, uh, close to 30% of bean producing area would be no more, you know? Um, so, so climate change. I think the frequency of these droughts 
Uh, the severity of these droughts is increasing, and climate change is a cause. And um, what is a, the, the response of the whole, the, the global response? I think the global uh, citizens' response is growing, but the government is, is astoundingly uh, is, uh, is short. Uh, for example, the British, uh, I mean, the UK has now a new prime minister, and what's her plan? Um, uh, who has she assigned as her energy minister? It's not somebody who is addressing this climate situation. So there is a huge injustice built into the system. And um, the Eastern African countries in all over Africa, we are suffering uh, because of the problem that they are causing. And uh, historically also, African agriculture was on decline because of historical factors. I think before the uh, European uh, maritime influence, before colonialism, um, it is well documented that Africa uh, has a, a very complex socio-economic and political system in terms of trade and agriculture, and that was disrupted hugely uh, during European maritime and slave trade, and also later by colonialism, and even uh, post-independence. That kind of influence has, has continued. Even now, new actors are coming in instead of, in addition to governments, new philanthro capitalists are coming with their own uh, methods of, uh, with their own solution for Africa. We can uh, mention that the Gates Foundation, for example, as one of the foundation, which has created an institution called the Alliance for Green Revolution uh, in Africa. Um, basically promoting uh, um, agrochemicals, you know, high yielding variety of seeds, market oriented agriculture, this kind of thing, which sucks again the resilience of our agriculture for the future. It doesn't build uh, sustainability, it doesn't build resilience. Um, so, you know, that all the problems that we faced with, uh, with army war, with desert army war, um, with, uh, with um, you know, with the drought, these are all exacerbated by the bad models of development that we are following as an Africa, and that's also the and, influence from, from outside. And yeah. Milion Bilai, how exacerbated are these issues by the war in Ukraine? There's two things there. One is, every week we're reading about the millions and billions of dollars that are going into the war in Ukraine yeah. that could be used elsewhere. Uh, but number two, um, Ukraine and Russia, among the largest Russia, the largest exporter of grain, also Russia of fertilizer, how does this affect? Africa? Hey, hugely. Um, the, the cost of fuel has increased. This is very, very significant in Africa, because the, the price of uh, uh, commodities, food commodities, will rise in response to the, the price of uh, fuel. Fertilizer, you know, we're laid into a past dependence. We're dependent on uh, external inputs for our, for our agriculture. And that external input, especially uh, fertilizers, you know, artificial fertilizers, come also in huge, uh, to a huge extent from uh, from Russia uh, mainly. And uh, the, 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 there are parts of Africa, the Northern Africa, uh, and also other parts of Africa who depend uh, on wheat that is produced from from Ukraine and Russia. And oil, the, the price of oil is incredible uh, now now in Africa. And this is brings a very, very critical question, a very critical agenda. I think the agenda for Africa now is food sovereignty. We have to be sovereign. We can't be depending on other countries, on, on the bad model of development, and um, on the whims and plans of others. I think that's very clear now. Uh, Dr. Abdulmullah, finally, if you could also uh, respond to this, talk about the impact of uh, the war of Russia's invasion of Ukraine and the fact that <clears throat> not just uh, 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 the, the provision of Russia and Ukraine uh, providing food for uh, uh, East Africa and large parts of the world, grain, fuel and fertilizer, but also the World Food Program uh, depended for uh, 75 percent of its food came from Russia and Ukraine. 
Yeah, um, before that, uh, if you allow me just to comment on what my, my brother just said. Um, the, the real cause of the crisis that we see in Somalia right now is actually uh, a development deficit. As Somalis are dying in droves uh, because of the drought, the country still has two rivers that still flow uh, day in and day out uh, right into the Indian Ocean, uh, unharvested and unutilized. Um, you go to the countryside, you see uh, livestock dying of, of thirst and lack of water. So this is, in, in essence, is a lack of climate adaptation, lack, uh, um, a high level of uh, uh, fragility, uh, and the answer is not to keep dumping relief um, year in and year out, but rather to address the, the root causes and to do adequate uh, climate adaptation. Uh, climate change is here to stay. It is unprecedented to see four failed fail rainy seasons with the projected uh, fifth one uh, looming. Uh, that, is, that is the answer. But for now, we are uh, much more focused on life-saving activities, and, and we are uh, um, trying to save as many as we can. With regard to the impact of the Ukraine, um, the war in Ukraine on, on Somalia, um, there are several things to be said here. Not only um, the, the fact that some of the wheat imports that used to come to Somalia used to come from uh, Russia and, and, and Ukraine, um, the, the, the ratio being 50% uh, from Ukraine, 75% from Russia, and all of that has come to a complete halt. But also the war has co uh, caused uh, disruption of supply chains. And that led to an increase in the price of essential commodities here by as high as 140 to 160%. Um, also, the, the fuel uh, shortages, this is mostly an informal economy, uh, and that uh, uh, continues to, to suffer from the, um, from the uh, global uh, disruptions as well as the uh, effects of uh, COVID-19. Doctor, um, we just so, have 30 seconds, so if you could say what's most important to happen right now. Yeah, the most important thing is that uh, we have a very short window of opportunity to step off the specter of uh, famine in, in Somalia. And that window is closing very fast. We need resources. We need them now uh, in order to scale up and save as many lives as we can.